Hi! Last year, I participated in a project called Life in a Day. Hi! Hello, last year in 2010, I had the privilege to participate in a global project called Life in a Day. It proved to be an unexpectedly enjoyable experience for me, capturing simple events of my life on one particular carefree Canadian summer day. A year later, just for fun and to reminisce, decided to pay a little personal tribute through this new unofficial video. Can't imagine who will see this, or what they will even think. But here it is anyway, hope you enjoy. So this is what free people do, rant on YouTube. What a waste of computers and human rights. When I rule the world, in my empire, my subjects will have none of that. But let's see what nonsense comes next. I still wake up early morning, which during Canadian summer this far north is shortly before sunrise. My days still normally begin with a little coffee, followed by making some protein-rich tasty breakfast to start the day properly, but without destroying the kitchen in the process. Afterwards, I brush my teeth, and yes, the toothpaste cap is again back on, if you haven't noticed already. Finally, the shower. Basically, a day as usual, except... What to say, had a minor breakdown in recent months. Rather not know how the viewer will interpret this sorry sight, but I do sort of curl up when listening to uplifting music, soothes my soul. And while on the subject of entertainment, my usual daily doses of television have since kind of diminished. Well, enough of this pathetic scene already. Better to just resume my usual morning routine, start the day with childlike enthusiasm, or at least a good bottle of whiskey. And with that horrible joke crossing my mind, suddenly my spirits were raised, and none even came from the bottle. Ah, another awful joke. Time for early lunch. 550 calorie stomach filling meal, spices, quantities of low calorie fillers, enhanced by rich flavors and nutrients. Albeit, still need to work on the calories bit. At the last minute, what I didn't record was adding a leftover potato mashed with milk and a hint of butter, reducing my daily caloric deficit to only 600. Later intended to have my favorite dessert, two cups of frozen blueberries, but changed my mind. Because the meal was so satisfying, not only was I full till bedtime, but didn't even crave any snacks. Ironic, in a sad way, still counting calories in light of looming malnutrition. But at least now, my meals are what they used to be last year, packed with essential nutrients, unlike months ago, when I neglected even those, and consequently experienced health issues. Moral of the story? Don't neglect essential nutrients, regardless. Today I will not be twiddling my thumbs like last year, because looking outside the window, I realized that today is one of those summer days best spent in the backyard, watching the garden tomatoes grow, and listening to music. As was the case with my dad, I too love vine-ripened tomatoes, no other kind compares in taste. There is no activity more exciting than intently watching ordinary vegetation grow cell by cell. One question asked by last year's Life in a Day project was to talk about what's inside our pockets. I chose my wallet for three special items, certain cards and a special American dollar. Couldn't find the third item, so assuming I lost it, only talked about the other two. Then, to my surprise, I find it among the cards. Thanks to my quick wit, got the idea to reshoot the entire scene. Long after the deadline for submitting the final video had passed. Well, we'll do it now in this unofficial tribute. By the way, I do have other trinkets that have special meaning to me. For example, a lucky four-leaf clover I picked in Europe's High Tetra Mountains, barely at the age of 11. Keychains from 1970s, the puppy a souvenir from a vacation by the Black Sea. I think it is pronounced Osterreich. The Republic of Austria in English. They now use euros, of course. 
but even this plain 10 shilling coin brings back memories from my early adulthood. No comment. Okay, we'll just quickly mention, I still remember that evening almost 30 years ago when I got this gift. At the top of the screen those black things with metallic legs are integrated circuits involving a cherished chocolate milk incident from 1990, which would take too long to explain. The seashells below are a bit unusual because they bring back an entire flood of memories, not just of the Seaside Heights beach in New Jersey where I found them. They relate to a car trip across southern Canada and northern United States in 1985 when we went to visit my godparents in Pennsylvania. Among so many memories, I always remember that friendly New York police officer with his radiant smile, cheerfully greeting us with a heartfelt friendly salute when he saw our Alberta license plate. And of course, there are many other wonderful memories. But this is enough. A casino chip I was too young to legally play at the time, but because of my ignorance did so anyway, and evidently won it back along with the entire ante, before being thrown out by security guards for being underaged. Skipping to my last memento is a silver Canadian $5 maple leaf. It is more appealing to me than its gold counterpart. A shiny, frosted work of art created by the talented people at Royal Canadian Mint. A humble leaf of a common tree, not signifying worldly forms of glory or power, but does nevertheless symbolize a country called Canada, which to name itself, as if providentially was meant to be rooted in equally humble origins, involving the misinterpretation of an aboriginal word meaning village. What's he saying, Father? Uh, Commandant Cartier is saying uh, this nation's name is uh, Canada. Canada? Ah, <laughs> Canada. Uh, beg, beg pardon, sir, but the word he used, I think it really means those houses down no, there. No, no, believe me, I know the word. It means nation, and Canada is its name. But I'm sure it means the houses, the village. Whoa, I digressed again. Basically, this 2002 vintage with the Chinese zodiac sign for the year of the horse is a memento my dad bought for me as a reminder of a trip to Banff National Park we made in 2002 despite his terminal cancer. Many trinkets, many memories showed you some, but none are in my pockets. So back to my pockets and that wallet with the special bus pass. This plain piece of paper, stamped with my former school's name on the back, reminds me of my high school senior year. Other things remind as well, such as the big notebooks I kept, as if though I would actually ever need them again, but they are too cumbersome to carry around, especially when compared to something smaller, pocket-sized, like trinkets or souvenirs and such. Ridiculous, but you get the idea. A school ring would also remind. But my parents wanted me to have a more sophisticated ring befitting a mature adult. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So they bought me a much pricier 22 karat gold piece of ornate jewelry, which I never wore or even cared for as much as this bus pass. No complaints by the way, just explaining. Besides, I do appreciate their thought, but without personal meaning, to me even most exquisite jewelry becomes basically how my former chemistry teacher might put it. Patrick, that's my name by the way. Gold, like potassium, are just minerals. Why would you value the inedible kind and look down upon the life-sustaining? Really have nothing against jewelry. I myself wear a gold chain. But not because it glitters. Rather because it was a special gift from my godparents, commemorating my 1969 baptism. Anyway, although any bus pass from that school year would serve the same purpose, this is the only one which somehow eluded the trash can, becoming a memento once rediscovered years later. So finally, on to its significance. It reminds me of that final year, namely the last full year me and my dear friend spent together. 
He was my spiritual twin. Profoundly changed my whole life for the better. Unlike ordinary best friends ever can. Did so just by mere virtue of being himself. Afterwards we drifted apart. And things just got far worse from then on, for many long years. Before improving again. But that's life. Sad and wonderful and everything in between. Laughter conceals a broken heart, they say. Comics and gestures. Who would ever suspect some of them conceal incredible pain? Beyond what average people experience. Especially when they seem so cheerful. Even to make others laugh in the midst of their own personal suffering. Cheerful explanation so far, eh? Well, that's the story behind this bus pass. Reminds me of something special. Almost like a photograph to some people, but of course entirely different. And nothing of the sort. In a way, kind of pathetic that a middle-aged man like me would care about a worthless piece of paper. Although I wonder how much more pathetic is it, when compared to those people who likewise value certain pieces of paper to such extent, they neglect loved ones, create financial turmoil, devise intrigues, even start wars, all just to increase their stockpiles of such paper as banknotes, stock certificates, deeds to national treasures and public assets. I much more prefer my piece of paper. Besides, in the final analysis, when the inevitable time comes to cross from this side of the grave to the other, valuable or not, no paper will matter then. Only the good and evil we did, the love or hate we nurtured in our hearts. But once again I ramble off on a tangent. So, that's it. After such a fascinating and exhausting experience observing vegetation grow, I think it's time to get some well-deserved rest. I think I meant to cut this part, I'm just getting ready. But in retrospect, kind of ironic it is in this preparatory moment, I am actually the real unscripted me. So. As if though I need to explain, this was the turning point after which my mind once again drew a complete blank. So, I guess there is nothing else left to say, but good night. I must have that bus bus. We'll give up my entire empire just to have that wonderful piece of paper.